Hello, hello there, my crafty friends. It is Candy here from SweetStamper.com, and I'm so happy to be with you here today for Teach Me Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I broadcast live here on Facebook, and I do a, a segment that I call Teach Me Tuesday. So I always teach something, and I've been doing a little kind of a mini series on the pastel chalks. I think they're actually this, I think they're called in the catalog, Soft Pastels Assortment. And uh, they're a really fun medium to use. And so I have been digging into that. They're a new item in the annual catalog in the 2021-2022 annual Stampin' Up! catalog. So uh, some people have never played with the pastels before. Some of us uh, were introduced to them either in school, in art class, or if you've been stamping with Stampin' Up! for a long time, they used to be an item that Stampin' Up! carried. Hi, Cindy, welcome, I'm glad you're here. And uh, somebody is here, I can't see, oh, that's Barb, hey. Um, welcome, welcome. Um, so Stampin' Up! used to carry chalks a long time ago, but they were in little squares. I love the new ones. I love the fact that they're in almost like a, um, almost like a chalk pencil. They're much, much easier to use in my view because you can pick them up. When we had the old ones, they were like in a little, almost like a little makeup kit. And these you can actually pick up and you can do a lot with them. So I've been having a lot of fun with them and I hope that you're enjoying. Um, one of the things I love about them is that it doesn't matter what level of crafter you are, you can be brand new and have great success with these soft pastels. You can be a uh, like a, an avid longtime crafter and have great success with the pastels. There's lots of techniques and fun things you can do with them. You can blend lots of colors. And I love, love, love the price point. Um, there are, I always get this mixed up. There's either eight colors for $9 or there are nine colors for $8. Let's see, three, uh, eight, there's eight colors. So there's eight colors and they're only $9. So. They're a great bargain to boot, and I am a bargain lover. So yeah, they, they kind of check all the boxes for me. So I have a lot to share with you today. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and bring the camera down. I'm gonna show you a little bit of sneak peek stuff before we get started, and then we are going to do a, well, we're gonna do some chalk, but I'm gonna use one of the brand new Celebration stamp sets that will be available beginning in August. Do I have my celebration brochure? Hmm, I thought I had it here. Well, never mind. Let's get going. Here we go. Okay. Let me just check the um, computer here so I can make sure you're seeing the appropriate things. Yay. Hey, Stella. Welcome from Sherman, Texas. Glad to see you. Thank you, Corinne, for sharing, and hello. And Jackie's here, welcome, welcome. Melissa, welcome. I wanted to show you, uh, as we kick off today, kind of hot off the press, um, this is a sneak peek of my monthly card class for August. Every month I run a class that I call Cards with a Twist, and it's an eight card class, and um, I call it Cards with a Twist because there's technically four designs and there's two each but i'll show you i call it cards with a twist because each set of two designs i do a little twist and so you can see my twist is on colors here and i typically but don't always typically most more often than not i do at least one fun fold in my class so this is featuring an annual catalog stamp set that i actually had already purchased and I already was thinking this would make a great uh, stamp set for cards with a twist because we make eight cards and we only use one stamp set. Welcome, Gail. But unbeknownst to me when I was thinking about this, Stampin' Up! decided to give us dies that you can get for free during celebration. So that's kind of the method in my madness for doing this in August. You'll notice this is a new, um, uh, set of designer series paper. So this is going to be new coming out next month and this is in our holiday catalog. So here again is my cards with a twist. You can see the two different twists and truth be told this is actually the same set of papers just twisted around. So that was super fun. 
And then I have this card, again, um, just really changed up one piece of paper here. And then, um, last but not least, um, I went with something really soft with these. So let me show you. Um, I haven't opened up the I haven't opened up the event yet. I'm actually still finishing up the insides on these cards. So that's everything on the outside's done, but the inside still has to be completed. So this is a stamp set again, and um, I highly recommend getting the stamp set. You can add that on to your class. It's not included in the class. Let me show you what is included in the class before I tell you about the add-ons. So you do get a half a pack of this gorgeous new paper, Harvest Meadow. I think you're going to love it. And you're also going to get a full pack of these new brushed metallic adhesive backed dots. These are awesome. There's a copper, there is a gold, and kind of a bronzy, I don't know what color that is. It's really kind of unique. It goes really nicely with the papers that I've selected here. So again, this is the Harvest Meadow Papers and they're just beautiful. So you have these wheat sheets here, and then look at that fun kind of folks, uh, kind of like a, like a folk art pattern. And then we've got kind of branches here, and then a really nice neutral that you can use on a whole host of things. Again, here is that kind of pattern, kind of a folk art pattern. And then this is probably my favorite piece, and I featured that uh, widely. <laughs> and, um, Let's see, we've got this piece here, this Calypso Coral. So you can see the pat, the, the color scheme I, I keyed in on was the Misty Moonlight, the uh, Calypso Coral, and then I threw in some, um, I threw in some um, ay, 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 Cajun Craze, and then Bumblebee is the other featured color and a little bit of just, not just jade, soft succulent. So, oh, and this, this is another really gorgeous piece of paper. Isn't that beautiful? This is the Misty Moonlight piece. So hopefully I'm coming through. Let me know if things are kind of dark. I didn't mean for them to be. So you're gonna get a half a pack of the paper. You're gonna get a whole pack of these dots and you're gonna get three yards of linen thread. Those are the things that you're gonna get with your class along with everything you need cut and prepared for these eight cards. You do get all of your die cuts included, except when you have to cut, you know, if you have to stamp and cut it out with the die, then I'm gonna give you a piece of, of cardstock to stamp and either use the die cuts or fussy cut, but you will get all of your other, you know, all of these die cuts are done for you. So let me just show you really quick what you can add on if you so wish. There is the designer, uh, designer shitty paper, wow. <laughs> There is the stamp set you can add on if you're interested. And you can also add on some inks and some uh, adhesives. If you want to, I've given you a little package that will total up $50 because then you'll get these dies for free. So um, these are some of the cuts that I was playing with. Let me show you these dies. They're really, I think a great set of dies. So, you do get the ones that will actually cut out um, the stamps in the stamp set, and you get all three. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Yay. Um, so you can cut out all of your stamped images, but then you have these awesome flowers. So here's where I was kind of playing around with layering them up. So you have the flowers there. You have this other flower here. And then you also, now I did use this little open um, leaf. I didn't use this one in my class. And I played with this flower, but I didn't actually end up using it for the cards in class. But um, I think there's a lot to recommend this set of dies. Again, this is a free celebration item. So this is free with a $50 order. And that's free with a $50 order, whether you take my class or not. So. Anyway, that is the sneak peek of my Cards with a Twist for August. Like I said, I'm just putting the finishing touches on that. Let me move this out of the way. And then I wanted to also show you, I like to always share with you when I get some happy mail. And this is from Ione. Ione is one of my favorite people in the whole world. 
And every time, she comes to my uh, retreats, and every time retreat is finished, she sends me a thank you card for retreat. And this is just gorgeous. I love this. Um, this is one of those note cards that we had. Um, I don't know. I think we had these maybe like two years ago. And um, they were scalloped, and they're just gorgeous. And she has used the... Um, I love, love, loved these dyes. These are the dyes from... I, yeah, yeah, what can I... I did a whole class around these dyes. I can't think of it. They... They were in our spring catalog. I, it'll come to me. Look at that, these gorgeous pearls that we had at one time. So yeah, she's done some beautiful work cutting this out of the designer series paper. Uh, somebody's gonna come up with that name for me or I will remember it. Okay, let's jump into chalks. So the soft pastel assortment is what we're going to be using today. And um, I have been, like I said, this is kind of a mini series that I've been doing on using the pastel chalks. Let me show you where we went before so that you will be able to see. I didn't get that. I, I, I. Did you try again? <laughs> Did you hear Siri? She's trying to help me. I'm getting a lot of shadow in my. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Oh my, technology, we love it and we hate it, don't we? Um, well, there is a bit of shadow. Let's see, does this help? Does that help? Maybe a little less shadow there? Okay, so this is our set of pastel chalks. And they have, the colors are here. Coastal Cabana, Daffodil Delight, Gorgeous Grape, Granny Apple Green, Mango Melody, Mossy Meadow, Night of Navy, and Poppy Parade. So, uh, these are sweet, sweet succulents. You know, I don't think that's this one, Gail. I know what you, t I know what you mean. Um, I don't think it's that one. It's that other one that I did. Ay, ay, ay. It was in the spring catalog, and it didn't make it into the annual catalog. And I did a lot with did a lot with this. I can't think of the name of it. It'll come to me or it'll come to somebody who took the class. Um, so I'm going to use these and I'm going to use this is a stamp set that you can earn for free during celebration which runs from August I believe the 3rd through the end of September. Um, now this is a stamp set that's free with a $100 order. And you may be thinking, well, why would it take a $100 order to get a stamp set? Usually with Celebration, you get a free stamp set with a $50 order, but let me show you. You get two full sleeves of stamps, and this gives you kind of a photorealistic as well as an outline stamp. And you get four excellent greetings for your dahlias, or dahlias, depending on how you pronounce it. And let's see what we're gonna do. I wanted to show you a couple of things uh, by way of kind of instruction because it is Teach Me Tuesday. Um, you will see that there's a bit of a gloppy mess on my silicone mat. And I decided to clean it on camera instead of doing it off camera because I use this a lot when I'm using the, uh, the multi-purpose liquid glue because the multi-purpose liquid glue is not water soluble and it can make a real sticky mess. So I like to use the silicone mat underneath it and then when you're done, you see how you just kind of rub your finger across it and it will kind of form these little balls of adhesive. And that is the way you clean your silicone mat when you've been using the, um, the multi-purpose liquid glue. And I do highly recommend using this underneath you when you're using the multi-purpose liquid glue because you won't have a gloppy mess on your, um, on your paper underneath you. Um, that can just become a nightmare if you're using the multi-purpose liquid glue, which is a great adhesive to use. But there are, you know, there's a little bit of a learning curve with it, as it were. I think there are some things you can, some best practices that definitely make a difference. So that is going to do the trick on my um, 
silicone mat. Now, you may wonder why I have my silicone mat out for the chalks, and I'll tell you why. Although you can make your chalks, you can create like a little pool of them, a paint palette of them on paper. One of the things I like about using them with the silicone mat is that it's a little bit tacky, well not tacky, but it has texture. And so you're, if you're going to be making a little paint palette with your chalks, which I'm going to do today, um, it kind of holds them in place and keeps them from flying around everywhere. Now I'm going to use the little um, spatula end of my take your pick tool. Welcome Valerie, I'm glad you've joined us. And I am going to pick up both the yellows. I do like using this to pull these out of here. I'm gonna use Mango Melody and Daffodil Delight and I'm gonna bring in a little bit of the Poppy Parade. Now, I'm actually going to make a sympathy card. You see how I'm making a little palette here? Um, I'm gonna make a sympathy card and one of the things I like with sympathy cards is I like to create a um, kind of a sunrise or a sunset image depending on your viewpoint there. But I think it's a lovely image for um, a sympathy card. I have certain things that I really like with sympathy cards and certain things I really don't. I don't like bling on sympathy cards. To me, it's just not appropriate. And although, um, you know, when someone passes and they've been in a lot of pain and we're rejoicing that they're no longer in pain, we're still mourning. We're mourning the loss of their life. We, we no longer have them in our life on the earth. And so I believe that um, grief is very real. Uh, you can't avoid it. And, um, but when you're sending an expression of sympathy, I, I really like it to have kind of a softness to it and some depth. I don't like bright, garish. I don't like um, bling. So those are all the things that I have about um, about um, sympathy cards. So yes, this, hey Betty, I'm glad to see you today. And Kristen is here, welcome. Thank you for sharing, that always helps me. Now I've gone ahead and mounted um, the detailed Dahlia stamp and I thought this would fit on a D block, but you know, it doesn't quite, these petals are really large. So this is going all the way into an E block. Another thing by way of instruction, I'm going to be using Versamark ink. And Versamark is a watermark ink, so it's clear. And this pad is old, like really old. So they last you forever. However, they will, believe it or not, get dry because you are transferring the ink. It's a clear, kind of a sticky ink. We use it a lot with um, heat embossing, but it will dry and you can't really tell because it's still a little bit sticky. But you'll notice that you're not getting as much of the watermark look when you stamp. So I wanted to just show you on camera how I like to use my refill. I think these refills are, I don't know, they're like $4 or something. When you squeeze this out, it's super, super thick. You see how gloppy that is? So when you squeeze that out, it will not just um, absorb into the pad. So I like to hold my, um, my refill without squeezing it and then just use the tip to press that sticky ink down into the pad. And I do like to do it in both directions. That's the way I fill my, my regular ink pads as well. Now you can see it's still really shiny up here and that tells me it's right on the surface, which is not what I'm wanting. I'm wanting it to, to really sink down into the pad itself. So that is how you ink up your Versamark pad. You do need to re-ink it from time to time. So um, just beware, when I, whenever I purchase an ink pad, I like to buy the refill at the same time. Then I'm covered. Uh, I'm not getting ready to make a project and I don't have any ink and then I'm frustrated because I have to wait for my order to come in. Okay, so I am going to ink this up. It is a large stamp. Anytime I'm inking up a large stamp, I like to do it upside down. And I'm not entirely sure this is the size. I'm probably gonna cut this down a little bit. But I'm going to 
stamp the uh, flower here, the dahlia, and then I'm going to stamp next to it the leaf. So I'm, it's a little bit hard to see. Let me see if I can pull it into the light. Yikes, I'm gonna be stamping blind there. Let's go ahead and add some color and then we can see about adding in that little leaf. Okay, now as I had shown before, whenever I'm using the Versamark and I want to use um, sponge daubers, I have a set and I keep them in their own little bag and I use these specifically for my, dog, my uh, chalks. Be the reason I do that is because if you have a little bit of residual Versamark on there, you don't really want to add that to a different project. Now, you can see on here that the lighter yellow is the Daffodil Delight, and the darker yellow is the Poppy, not Poppy Parade, the darker yellow is the um, Mango Melody. Now, you see how it's almost like magic <laughs> when you start putting that down. Let me bring this down a little bit closer so you can see better. You see how my flower starts to appear? And it's such a pretty flower. Look at the detail on that dahlia. I love it. I think it's really gorgeous. Now, I want to add a little bit more color. And I'm going to add more color to the outside of the flower. Let's get a little bit more of this bright yellow on the inside. And now I'm going to pick up the Mango Melody, and I'm going to sweep that around the outside. And you can see how that brings a little bit more. And I'm going to also bring it to the inside and leaving kind of the center petals of my flower a little bit lighter. Now I am going to just tap off that excess. And now I'm going to add a little bit of Poppy Parade. So let's just add a little bit here in the middle. I'm going to start with a light touch because I don't want to overpower this. Remember, this is a sympathy card, and I'm wanting to create kind of a sunrise look. A little bit of a sunrise look on my flower. But I'm wanting there to be some variation in the shades, so I have purposely left the center a little bit lighter and concentrating my color on the very outside and on the very inside. One of the things that's fun about using these soft pastels is that you can get a lot of different looks. Each card or paper project that you do with these chalks is gonna be a little bit different. And that's part of the charm of these, is the different looks that you can get with this. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. So I think that, oh yes, I do have a little piece of tissue here. And I'm just gonna wipe off the excess. It's a really nice look. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to come back in because I was kind of stamping blind with my leaf. Now I'm going to add my leaf where we go. Let's add the leaf like so. And we're going to bring in a bit of green. Now there's only one green. Oh no, there's two greens. That's right. I've got three. Now I do have Granny Apple Green and Mossy Meadow. Granny Apple Green is a really bright green. So I'm going to go with this deep green. And you see how nice and trim that is? It just doesn't take up much room at all in your, on your shelf or on your table or anything. So I do want to close this up because I don't want chalk getting into my Versamark pad. And just another little tip, I like to store these upside down because the ink is at the top and I want that to be ready for me to use the next time. Um, they are pastel chalks, Kristen. So these are called soft pastels, but they are pastel chalks. So they are art, and they're just an art medium. 
You might have used them in grade school. Yeah, somewhere over here is my, there we go. There's my leaf. It is appearing. Ha ha. There we go. Well, I don't want to get green in my flower. So, look how pretty. I like it. I like it a lot. You see that soft green? That's what I wanted. I wanted that kind of soft, deep green. I didn't want anything that was gonna be kind of bright and garish. Now, you know, although I thought that I wanted kind of a, a pale center, I'm thinking that pale center might be a little bit too pale. So I'm gonna come back in here with the darker yellow, which is Mango Melody, and I'm gonna add a little more. Yeah, I think that's gonna kind of brighten that up a little bit. And the great thing about the, the Versamark is because it's sticky, it holds the pastel. So I don't have to worry about it coming off. I'm gonna just do this little sweep across it and then you're done. And that is going to keep everything in place. And to me, this is a really nice look for a sympathy card because it's soft. And that is the look that I'm wanting. I'm wanting to have a soft look. Now you're gonna be surprised when I go with to uh, put together the rest of this card because as promised, I am going to showcase one of the papers that's on sale with every single Facebook Live and this is no uh, different. Now this, you could just take this and run it under water when you're done. That's the easiest way to clean that up. Sorry about that, I needed to get a, an ink pad. And um, the other thing I want to show you, this is a used baby wipe. I've used it on something earlier today. But when you have your piercing mat, um, sometimes they get a bit, they get ink on them or they get chalk on them. Just use a baby wipe and it will clean up and be good as new. They also dry really quickly. Now you could also just take a wet rag, but I like to take a baby wipe. It gets just a little bit of, um, gets just a little bit of um, soap on there. And then that is ready to go the next time I wanna use it. And look at all that stuff that came up. So yeah. Okay, now I think that's a little bit big. So I am going to trim it down just a wee bit. And then I'm going to get my, um, I'm going to get my um, greeting ready. I'm gonna bring this really tight. And let's see, let's bring this down here. And bring it down here so that I have a true focal piece. Now, you know, you could fussy cut that. Yeah, that's not that's not gonna happen in my world because I'm gonna only fussy cut under duress. <laughs> that is only if I absolutely have to. So let's see what we can come up with. Let's see if the vision that was in my mind is going to work or not. So this is what I was thinking, and I think it's going to work very nicely. This, believe it or not, is the In the Wild Designer Series paper. Now, that seems to be a very unlikely candidate for a sympathy card, but if you know the way I like to do things, I love to love, love to think outside the box. I love to come up with something that is unexpected. Um, that's part of the fun of creativity for me. So, let me find my little cheat sheet so you can see this paper. This is one of the papers that is on sale this month through the end of the month. So we're in the last few days of the designer series paper sale and there are nine different patterns that are in the sale and this is the paper I'm using. Now, this, like I said, this is unexpected for a sympathy card, but I wanted something deep and I love uh, Cajun Craze is a great deep color for what I'm doing. Now, I've got a, um, I just put crumb cake behind here because I didn't want it to be too dark, but I could pull in some green or some yellow. So let me 
pull a couple of other um, a couple of other card bases to see what I can come up with that might just work. being garish. Now this is the green that's in the green of my flower, of uh, my leaves. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. This is a little bit too pale, I think, the crumb cake. Now the other way I could go is to bring in Cajun Craze, um, not Cajun Craze, Calypso Carl, which is a little bright for a sympathy card. I like the oranges, but I kind of think this green is going to be what I am looking for. And Oh, look at that, almost exactly fits there. But I think I am gonna go with it this way. And I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna do a frame around it. You know, a lot of times we put a little matte frame around this, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is grab the greeting, which is here, and it's ever so lovely. It says, sending heartfelt sympathy. That is just perfect. And I did, you know, I didn't even, mention the fact that I decided to go with a very vanilla instead of basic white. Again, trying to achieve a really soft look, and I think vanilla is especially great for sympathy cards because it's just that bit softer. And that was what I was wanting to go for. So now I am going to bring in, I probably need to, let's see, I think this, this is the double oval punch, and this is what I'm thinking is going to work for my greeting right about there. Let's see, do I want to do it this way? Oh, that's kind of nice too. I could do it that way. Oh, I'm not sure which way I want to do it. Well, we'll play with that a little bit. Okay, so let's get our greeting together, and I think I want to do it on crumb cake, and maybe that's gonna to be too, I bet that won't fit in there. The best laid plans. Hmm, that would actually be quite nice. Will this fit? Ooh, ooh, maybe just barely. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. I am stamping in early espresso. Again, kind of keeping with uh, deep colors for my sympathy card. Okay, Corinne is liking the green. Jackie's liking the green. Kristen is on, oh, Val, okay. Green is, green is the winner here. Now let's just see. Will this fit or do I need, it fits beautifully there. Oh, look at there. It's a tight fit, but look at that, it fits nicely. And I did opt to go with um, early espresso. I could have gone with Cajun Craze, but sometimes you can get a lot, you can get too much of one color. And so um, having said that, that is gonna be too much Cajun Craze there. And maybe I don't even need that. Maybe I just, because I've got a lot of layers going here and you can get too much of a good thing. And again, back to sympathy cards, I don't want it to be too fussy. Now, I'm not gonna put it down just yet because I'm not totally sure. Oh, I just thought of something. Now, this could totally wreck everything, but I think it's gonna be good. Look at there. Let's just do a torn edge. Ha! <laughs> ah, yes. That is going to be the ticket. I like it. I hope you do too. I was like, okay, if I've ruined this, there's, you know, <laughs> that I've totally ruined my, my focal piece, but I like it. I like it a lot. And then a little piece there. I think that's where I'm going to go. So, um, okay. So Kristen, you're liking that torn edge. I think it really kind of fits. Now, um, I don't like bling on uh, sympathy cards, but I did think that a pearl might just work if I do it in Cajun Craze. Now, the great thing about your stamp and blends is that you can color any of your embellishments with it because this is a, an alcohol-based permanent marker. So let's see what happens. 
if I take a Cajun craze pearl and put it in the center of my dahlia. I think it's kind of a nice effect. Uh, oh, Susan, I'm glad you're here. Even though you came on late, we're glad you are here with us. Making a sympathy card with the uh, celebration stamp set called Delicate Dahlias. And I think that I'm ready to put everything down. So let me know what you're thinking. Now, if I were, if this were not a, um, a sympathy card, I might want to put some Wink of Stella on this dahlia. Again, I personally do not like bling or shine or anything like that on a sympathy card. And again, when it comes to sympathy cards, pearls are just the perfect, you know, pearls are always appropriate. Um, yay, okay, so Kristen is liking the pearl. So let me bring in a few little bits and pieces. Now, the other thing I could do, I could do, <laughs> I could add a little bit of linen thread. So, let's just think about that, but we'll add that at the end if we're going to do it. So, let's layer this up. Now, I will say that's my favorite piece in this entire set of designer series papers, so it took a lot for me to use the other side. I don't know about you guys. Do you hoard your favorite pieces of designer series paper too? But I thought this was, again, unexpected for a sympathy card, but I think it just works. I think it just works. Now, that needs to go. I want it to open the right way. Get all my layers on here. Again, this is, this is um, Mossy Meadow, and this is Cajun Craze. And that is In the Wild Designer Series Paper. And now we are gonna pop this part up. No, we're gonna lay this flat and pop this up. Another thing on when it comes to sympathy cards, I don't like too, too much um, lift. Again, I want it just to be subtle. I think that is, to me, what's really appropriate with a sympathy card is a lot of subtlety. And I think with that in mind, I think that this kind of going down in the corner is a nice way to layer this up. And I'm glad, yes, I am gonna raise the message. The message is what is going to be popped up on Stampin' Dimensionals. And then this is kind of a soft background. And you know, one of the reasons I'm making a sympathy card, I tell you, I usually make these like two and three at a time, and I've just needed a lot lately, so. Every time I talk to a friend, it seems like they have somebody in their life that is, that they've lost. Now, I could, let's just see what we could do here with some linen thread. I could do like this, which I kind of think would be nice, doing a little bit there. I could take a little bit and put it at the uh, kind of at the end of the leaves. I hope that um, as I've been sharing this little mini series on how to use uh, the pastel, the soft pastels, otherwise known as chalks. I hope you're getting. Um, I hope you're getting uh, thinking about considering adding them to an order. I think that they're just one of those things that's really good to have on hand. Like I said, you can play with them as, you can bring your grandkids into play with these. You could do, what do we think? Is that too much or is that about right? Okay, you're liking the the the, uh, the twine. Do I wanna just do it like that or do I wanna wrap it around the side? So that's what I need to kind of find out. I'm gonna tidy up a little bit while I'm, while we're thinking about that. And I think that Oh, Kristen, I'm so glad to hear that you're gaining feeling back in your hands. That's exciting. I know that when you've had a when you've had a, a, a loss of function, as it were, or a loss of ability in your body, and you regain that, it's a huge, huge thing. 
This is going to be the inside of my card. And what I'm going to do is, hmm, I think I'm gonna take the, where did my little, did I already put the stamp away? Surely not. <laughs> That's unheard of for me. Somewhere I have the stamps out. No, I didn't put them away. That's silly, Candy. You can't even find the stamps. Oh, they're probably underneath. Yeah, they're underneath the paper. Okay. It is a God thing. You're right, Kristen. That is a God thing for sure that God has restored that to you. Now, this is interesting. I actually did not mean to use this stamp on here. I meant to use the outline stamp, but I think it kind of works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use... Um, just do that on the inside as well because I have not cleaned up my chalks yet. So let's do this on the inside of the card. Put my Versamark lid Take this away. And I'm waiting for somebody to tell me, should I stick that down or not? Do we want the... Uh, yes or no on the little linen thread bow. Is that a yay or a nay? What are we thinking? Get this back. Get my green dauber back out. And somewhere I put my chalk palette out of the way where I could wash it when I was done. Y'all are very patient with me. Okay, we're liking the bow. Yeah, I think that this, I think this filled in more actually worked better instead of just the outline. So I think that, you know, sometimes the kind of errors we make, what's the saying in uh, with artistic things that uh, you have a little happy mistake. Hmm, where are my chalk thingies? I have a, ah, oh, here we go. See, I put it out the way so it would, I think I better move that. Okay, let's pick up a little bit more chalk. And let's do this on the inside. I think that's gonna be really lovely to pull that into the inside of my card. I'm digging it. So you can see the beautiful, beautiful detail that is in this stamp set. Again, this is the Delicate Dahlias, which is going to be free with a $100 order during celebration, which runs, I think, August the 3rd or August the 5th, I can't remember which one. For some reason, both those numbers are in my mind. And it runs all the way through the end of September. And when you're placing um, a $100 order, it can be for anything at all. So we have, at the same time a celebration is kicking off, we have a holiday catalog kicking off as well, which is super exciting. And um, the holiday catalog is officially known as the July to December mini catalog, but I still call it the holiday catalog, so yeah, there's that. Now, somewhere up here, oh, yeah, here are my adhesives. August 3rd, thank you, Marlene. And I will tell you, I have not been feeling well. I'm a little under the weather, and I spent most of the morning in bed, and I was toying with whether I was going to make it today or not, and I, about 12.30, I told my husband, I said, you know what? I think I'm just gonna get up and do this because I'm not feeling so awful, but I can't do a little stamping. And I have to say, you know, it does perk you up. <laughs> so probably be back in bed later today, but um, I am a little under the weather and hoping to be feeling super fine in a day or two. Okay. So that is my sweet, 
soft sympathy card um, made with the pastel, soft pastels using Versamark ink. Now I did use a traditional ink for my greeting. Um, although, but I mean, you could even do your greeting with the, with the pastels. So this is my feature for today and soft pastel assortment. And I used the Delicate Dahlias stamp set free with a $100 order during celebration. And I hope that you have enjoyed today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will be here Thursday. On Thursdays, we do something totally different. On Thursdays, I do simple and stepped up stamping. And it's equally fun, just different. And um, if you are not already on my email list, I would encourage you to sign up for that. And that way you get all the news of my upcoming classes and events. I do uh, mainly online events, but I do have some live local events here in San Antonio. Um, I just finished um, my weekend retreat last weekend and I run those uh, several times a year have people coming in from out of state for them. They're a lot of fun. And so if they are called Creative Escape because they are an escape from reality and you can do whatever creative activities you like to do. I have people that come to Creative Escape and they don't really do much stamping. Um, we provide them with a free class and all kinds of fun things. But some of them are doing like diamond art. Some of them are crocheting. Some of them are knitting. Uh, some of them... Um, Deanna, who is our resident massage therapist, um, and she books massages for people at retreat. She was doing these amazing Christmas ornaments made with wood. And so most people who are doing all those things do a little bit of paper crafting as well. And then there's some of us who are doing all paper crafting, a lot of scrapbookers that come. So uh, we are already full for our November event and I'm opening up registration, just opened up registration yesterday for my January creative escape so that is uh, that is here I am doing um, Christmas in July uh, at my church this weekend so if you live locally and you have not yet gotten um, signed up for that I'm doing um, buy one get one free shopping which is free shopping uh, but I'm also doing a Christmas card class and there is that is twenty dollars or free with a twenty five dollar order so if you haven't signed up for that you're going to want to sign up for that. I think it's either today or tomorrow's the last day to sign up because I got to get prepped and ready for that. So that um, even with shopping, I'm asking people to sign up. Just, you know, in the current climate we're in, I didn't want things to be too crowded for people. I want people to have plenty of space so that they feel comfortable, um, not, you know, where people are just like crowded all together. So that way I'm able to kind of stagger things a little bit. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your support here. Please share my video, it helps me so much. Don't forget that we are in the final days of the Designer Series paper sale. It goes only to the end of July. So if you are interested in getting some of this gorgeous in the wild paper or any of the other, uh, there are nine sets of Designer Series papers on sale. You'll want to do that. If you don't have a demonstrator, um, I would love to be your demonstrator. And I have a host code at the top of this page and I do reward my customers with some fun free things as thank yous. So thanks again, take care, God bless, and I will see you here on Thursday at 2 p.m. Central Time.